Amphibians are the most threatened group of vertebrates on the planet. In recent years, a strange and lethal fungal disease has started to spread among them. The golden frog, which lives only in one small area in Panama, was in particular danger as the disease is already on the frontier of its territory. If we were to film it at all, we would have to move quickly. We had been told that in Panama, the frog's few remaining breeding streams were being rapidly destroyed by the building of a new road, making the last tiny population even more at risk from the disease. The fungus clogs the animal's moist skin. Since all frogs breathe through their skin, infected animals die from suffocation. Frog biologist Eric Lindquist, who first described the golden frog's signaling behavior, helped the film team to thoroughly disinfect their kit before traveling into the frog's territory. Freshly scrubbed up, Eric took the team to one of the golden frog's last known breeding sites. But would they still be there? Yeah, you hear that? That's a male calling. Okay, we have another male crawling up over here. Crawling up the rock face. But with the fungus approaching at a rate of up to 25 miles a year, the frogs were rapidly disappearing from all their known breeding sites. The advance crew immediately set about filming as much of the behavior as they could. By the time I arrived, there was only one remaining location where the frogs survived. Where exactly are we going? Uh, I would prefer not saying precisely. You see, this is really the last population of the golden frog left in the wild. And um, historically, the locals have been collecting out these animals as good luck talismans. And so now, left with just one population, I'm concerned that if the, if the secret locality gets uh, given out, there will be international collectors that would come. Really? Sure. They're, they're rare enough now where many people would pay top dollar for these animals. Were they ever what you might call common? When I talked to people who had been here in the past, that the populations were so abundant that one would have to watch where they're stepping to keep from killing one. Really? Yes. yes. Eric? has his own low-tech method of finding them, which he assures me normally works. See, when you call, sometimes they'll call back and they'll reveal their location. Sometimes they're tucked away behind leaves and they're really difficult to find. Hopefully we can elicit a response. It's the fastest way to get them to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Was that him? Yeah, listen. Uh. So they're here. They're here. There's one over here. You see him right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks like a male. Oh, I can do it again. <laughs> You have to hum and whistle at the same time. I'll do it. See if he can. Now we knew the frogs were still here, we could complete the filming. The local people have always treasured their remarkable little frog, but Eric was the first to document its signaling behavior. Uh, it was an animal that was just walking. I wasn't sure if the animal was trying to flush out prey or if it was using it in a, in a, in a communication role. 
And so a group of us set out to look at whether or not this was communication. We tried uh, mirror presentations to the animals, and, and when you presented them with a mirror, they would hand wave at the mirror, as opposed to, say, maybe the back side of a mirror that didn't have a reflective surface. Some of us have looked specifically at an LCD screen, a, a little television with a hand waving a semaphoring frog, and uh, it has elicited a number of responses, specifically from males. Well, you show a television picture to a male, and he waves back. He waves back, and he'll even call to the, really? to the male on the yeah. television screen. Yeah. <laughs> it's really fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. They then experimented with a life-size plastic model, complete with waving arm, the sort of high-tech gear I thought I might manage to operate myself. not as easy as you might think. Eric showed me how it should be done. You've got to get that slow motion wave just right. The frogs waved. They called. They even attacked. So that wave really is a form of communication. So they're just saying, keep off, keep off. Huh? Is that right? We're not sure. Sometimes there seem to be certain hand waves that may indicate appeasement, showing that I'm just walking through perhaps your, your territory. <laughs> don't, don't bother me. <laughs> really? Yeah. Ah, please. <laughs> but how endangered is the golden frog? This is it. What, what you see, you're, you're going to be the last crew to film these in the wild. And indeed, we were. Soon after finishing filming, the local scientists decided the time had come to take all the surviving golden frogs into captivity before the fungus arrives here and kills them all. They and other rare species of frog also threatened were being brought back to a special frog hospital when I was introduced to some of the other patients. So what are these? They're nocturnal, so they spend... Here, the they're being treated daily with a fungicide, but without a vaccine to protect them, and with the fungus still at large in the forest, they can't be reintroduced into their proper home. Frogs, so common in these humid forests, are crucial links in the ecology. If they disappear, all kinds of food chains will be broken and the effect could be little short of catastrophic to wildlife in general. And sadly, for now at least, it seems that the golden frog has waved its last in the wild.